Welcome to Brainwaves, the channel where we explore fascinating topics that tickle your brain. In today's episode, we dive into the captivating world of wine and uncover its intriguing origins. Wine has been enjoyed by humans for millennia, but have you ever wondered where it all began? Join us as we embark on a journey through time to discover the ancient origins of this beloved elixir. Welcome back to Brainwaves and our exploration of the origins of wine. In this section, we delve into the ancient roots of winemaking in Iran, dating back to around 7,600 BCE. The discovery of wine in this region is a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of early human civilizations. Archaeological evidence reveals fascinating insights into the Neolithic communities who first domesticated wild grapevines and experimented with winemaking techniques. These pioneering individuals laid the foundation for the rich wine culture we know today. In this section of the origins of wine, we focus on the archaeological evidence that supports the ancient roots of winemaking in Iran. Excavations of ancient sites have unearthed numerous artifacts and structures that provide valuable insights into the early cultivation and production of wine. Pottery vessels known as amphorae, with residue containing tartaric acid, a key component of wine, have been discovered, showcasing the link between these vessels and winemaking. These findings lend credibility to the notion that winemaking in Iran can be traced back thousands of years and showcases the remarkable craftsmanship of our ancestors. Welcome back to the origins of wine. In this section, we explore the role of Neolithic communities and the domestication of wild grapevines, a crucial development in winemaking. These early human settlements, located in present-day Iran, recognized the potential of wild grapevines and began cultivating them systematically. By selectively planting and nurturing the vines, these communities initiated the process of domestication, leading to improved grape quality and consistency. This significant step not only ensured a more reliable supply of grapes but also laid the foundation for the establishment of vineyards, initiating a new era in winemaking. In this section, we explore the earliest evidence of wine production techniques in ancient Iran. The preserved remnants of winemaking equipment, such as stone fermentation vessels and clay storage jars, provide valuable clues about the methods used by our ancestors. Grape stomping, a well-known technique depicted in ancient artwork, played a crucial role in extracting juice from grapes and initiating the fermentation process. Additionally, the discovery of ancient winemaking tools like strainers and presses further highlights the sophistication and ingenuity of early winemakers. These early techniques laid the groundwork and set the stage for the development and refinement of winemaking processes that continue to evolve to this day. Welcome back to the origins of wine. In this section, we explore the fascinating spread of wine cultivation from ancient Iran to Egypt and Mesopotamia. The trade routes linking these regions played a significant role in the diffusion of winemaking techniques and grape cultivation. As early as 3000 BCE, wine had become an integral part of the social and religious practices of these ancient civilizations. Egyptians associated wine with their gods and used it in various ceremonies, while Mesopotamians believed that wine had divine origins. The adoption and integration of winemaking into the cultural fabric of these societies further solidified its importance and laid the groundwork for its future influence in the Mediterranean and beyond. In this section, we explore the influence of trade routes and the spread of wine cultivation from Iran to Egypt and Mesopotamia. The ancient trade routes, such as the Silk Road and the Mediterranean Sea trade routes, served as conduits for the exchange of goods, ideas, and culture across vast distances. Along these routes, traders carried not only goods but also knowledge of winemaking techniques and grapevine cultivation. As the demand for wine grew, so did the need for reliable sources of grapes. This led to the establishment of vineyards in new regions, allowing the cultivation of different grape varieties and the expansion of the wine industry. The network of trade routes played a pivotal role in facilitating the widespread dissemination of winemaking practices ultimately shaping the development of wine cultures across different civilizations. In this section, we delve into the role of wine in religious and social practices of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Wine held immense significance in both spiritual and social contexts. In ancient Egypt, 
Wine was believed to be the blood of the gods and was offered during religious ceremonies as a symbol of divine connection. It was also an integral part of social gatherings, where it was consumed to celebrate special occasions and foster community bonds. Similarly, in Mesopotamia, wine played a central role in religious rituals, believed to bridge the gap between mortals and deities. Additionally, wine was used as a social lubricant, fostering camaraderie and enhancing the enjoyment of communal celebrations. The cultural importance of wine in these ancient societies cannot be overstated. In this section, we explore the role of wine in the ancient cultures of Egypt and Mesopotamia. Wine held a prominent place in the daily lives and traditions of these civilizations. In ancient Egypt, wine was an offering to the gods, and its consumption was associated with religious rituals and the afterlife. The pharaohs were known to have their own vineyards, and wine was enjoyed by both the elite and the common people. In Mesopotamia, wine was considered a divine gift, and its production and consumption were integral to religious ceremonies and social gatherings. It was also used for medicinal purposes and as a form of currency. The rich symbolism and deep cultural significance of wine in these ancient societies highlight its importance as a symbol of power, wealth, and spirituality. Welcome back to the origins of wine. In this section, we delve into the significance of wine in ancient Greece and Rome. Wine played a pivotal role in both cultures, shaping their social, cultural, and even religious practices. In ancient Greece, wine was associated with Dionysus, the god of wine and festivities. It was celebrated in symposia, where men gathered to drink, discuss, and engage in intellectual conversations. Wine was also used in religious ceremonies, believed to have the power to connect mortals with the divine. In ancient Rome, wine became a symbol of status and luxury. It was consumed in various settings, from extravagant banquets to everyday meals, and was thought to foster conviviality and enhance social interactions. The appreciation for wine in ancient Greece and Rome helped to establish the foundations of wine culture that continue to thrive to this day. In this section, we focus on the significance of wine as a symbol of status and luxury in ancient Greece and Rome. In both cultures, wine consumption was closely associated with wealth, power, and social standing. In ancient Greece, the Symposium, a gathering of elite men, served as a platform to showcase their prosperity and refinement. Wine was served in exquisite vessels and the amount and quality of wine consumed reflected one's wealth and social status. Similarly, in ancient Rome, wine consumption was seen as a sign of affluence and sophistication. Lavish banquets known as convivia were hosted by the affluent class, where wine flowed freely and expensive vintages were served. Wine became a marker of social hierarchy and an integral part of the lavish lifestyle of the Roman elite. In this section, we explore the godly connection between Dionysus and Bacchus in ancient Greece and Rome, respectively. Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, was revered as the bringer of joy and ecstasy. He was associated with the cultivation of grapes, winemaking, and the celebration of life's pleasures. Dionysian festivals, known as Dionysia, were characterized by wild revelry, dancing, and the consumption of copious amounts of wine. The Romans, influenced by Greek culture, adopted their own deity related to wine, known as Bacchus. Bacchanalia, the Roman equivalent of the Dionysian festivals, were dedicated to Bacchus and involved similar rites of wine, music, and ecstatic revelry. The connection between these gods and wine reinforced the importance of wine in both cultures, portraying it as a divine elixir that brought joy, liberation, and a connection to the divine. In this section, we highlight the importance of wine in ancient Greek and Roman society. Wine held a central role in both cultures, permeating various aspects of life. In ancient Greece, wine was not just a beverage but a symbol of civilization and refinement. It was believed to foster intellectual conversations and inspire artistic and philosophical pursuits. The Symposium, a gathering of elite men, was a significant social institution where wine was consumed in abundance, contributing to the exchange of ideas and the forging of alliances. Similarly, in ancient Rome, wine was an integral part of daily life. It was consumed during meals, social gatherings, and religious ceremonies. 
wine became a symbol of hospitality, friendship, and even political influence. The importance of wine in both ancient Greek and Roman society cannot be overstated, as it shaped social customs, cultural practices, and even the dynamics of power. In this section, we explore the cultivation of grapes in ancient Iran and its significance in the origin of winemaking. The Neolithic communities of ancient Iran played a crucial role in the domestication of wild grapevines. Through selective breeding, these early cultivators developed vineyards with grapes suitable for winemaking. The cultivation of grapes was closely tied to the agricultural practices of these communities, who recognized the value of grapes not only as a food source but also as a means to produce wine. They developed techniques to tend to the vineyards and harvest the grapes at their optimal ripeness. These early grape growers also discovered methods to extract the juice and ferment it to create wine. The cultivation of grapes in ancient Iran marks a pivotal moment in the history of winemaking, setting the stage for its subsequent spread to other ancient civilizations. In this section, we delve into the domestication of wild grapevines by Neolithic communities, which played a crucial role in the origin of winemaking. The Neolithic people, who were transitioning from a nomadic lifestyle to settled agriculture, recognized the potential of wild grapevines growing in their vicinity. They observed the characteristics of these wild vines and began selectively breeding them to enhance desirable traits such as larger, sweeter grapes. Over generations, through trial and error, these early cultivators successfully domesticated the wild grapevines, transforming them into cultivated varieties that were better suited for winemaking. This process of domestication involved careful selection, propagation, and cultivation of the vines. The domestication of wild grapevines was a pivotal breakthrough that laid the foundation for the emergence of vineyards and the subsequent spread of winemaking techniques to other ancient civilizations. In this section, we explore the techniques of wine production that were employed during the Neolithic era. The Neolithic communities developed several innovative methods to extract the juice from grapes and initiate the fermentation process. One of the primary techniques involved crushing the grapes by hand or using wooden or stone implements. Once the grapes were crushed, the juice would be collected in containers made from animal skins, clay pots, or even carved stone vessels. The juice would then be left to ferment naturally, as wild yeasts present on the grape skins triggered the fermentation process. Fermentation took place in cool, dark environments such as caves or underground storage areas, ensuring a stable temperature for the transformation of sugars into alcohol. Over time, these early winemakers refined their techniques, experimenting with different grape varieties, fermentation vessels, and storage methods to further enhance the quality and flavor of their wines. The techniques of wine production during the Neolithic era laid the foundation for the advancements and complexities of winemaking that would evolve in later civilizations. In this section, we delve into the spread of grape cultivation to Egypt and Mesopotamia, two civilizations that played significant roles in the development of winemaking. Around 3000 BCE, the cultivation of grapes for winemaking began to expand beyond the borders of ancient Iran. This expansion was facilitated by the establishment of trade routes that connected different regions, allowing for the exchange of goods, ideas, and agricultural practices. As the knowledge of grape cultivation and winemaking techniques reached Egypt, it found fertile ground in the fertile Nile Delta. The Egyptians quickly recognized the potential of grape cultivation and embraced it as an important aspect of their agricultural practices. Similarly, in Mesopotamia, the fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, grape cultivation and winemaking became integral to the agricultural and cultural traditions of the region. The spread of grape cultivation to Egypt and Mesopotamia marked a significant step in the diffusion of winemaking techniques and the integration of wine into the fabric of these ancient civilizations. In this section, we explore the influence of trade routes in the diffusion of grape cultivation from ancient Iran to Egypt and Mesopotamia. Trade routes played a crucial role in the exchange of goods, knowledge, and cultural practices between different regions. As merchants traveled along these trade routes, they carried not only valuable commodities but also ideas and technologies. The cultivation of grapes and the art of winemaking were among the knowledge that spread through these trade networks. The trade routes connecting ancient Mesopotamia with regions such as the Levant, Anatolia, 
and the Indus Valley acted as conduits for the dissemination of grapevines and winemaking practices. Similarly, the Nile River, which served as a major trade artery, facilitated the flow of grape cultivation techniques from ancient Iran to Egypt. The influence of trade routes in the diffusion of grape cultivation was crucial in the establishment of vineyards and the expansion of winemaking beyond its place of origin. In this section, we focus on the adoption of winemaking in ancient Egyptian culture, following the spread of grape cultivation to the region. The ancient Egyptians embraced grape cultivation and winemaking, recognizing its agricultural and economic potential. Wine became an essential part of their culture, playing a significant role in religious rituals, social gatherings, and daily life. The Egyptians developed advanced techniques for grape cultivation, including irrigation methods to maximize grape yields in the arid climate along the Nile River. They also mastered the art of winemaking, employing precise fermentation processes and blending techniques to produce a range of wines with different flavors and qualities. Wine held a prominent position in ancient Egyptian society, being enjoyed by both the elite and the common people. It was often offered to deities in religious ceremonies and was a key component in funerary rituals. The adoption of winemaking in ancient Egyptian culture highlights the deep-rooted connection between wine, spirituality, and everyday life in this ancient civilization. In this section, we delve into the incorporation of winemaking into Mesopotamian traditions, following the spread of grape cultivation to the region. Mesopotamia, known as the Cradle of Civilization, embraced the cultivation of grapes and the art of winemaking, incorporating it into their rich cultural traditions. Wine held a significant role in Mesopotamian society, serving as a symbol of prosperity, religious offerings, and social celebrations. The region's fertile soil, watered by the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, provided an ideal environment for grape cultivation. Mesopotamian winemakers developed advanced methods of vineyard management, including vine training techniques and the use of terraced gardens to optimize grape production. They also honed their winemaking skills, utilizing clay vessels called cuve of for fermentation and storage. Wine played a central role in Mesopotamian religious rituals, being used in ceremonies dedicated to their deities. The consumption of wine was also intrinsic to social gatherings, where it fostered camaraderie and acted as a symbol of hospitality. The incorporation of winemaking into Mesopotamian traditions further highlights the cultural significance and wide-ranging impact of grapes and wine during this time period. In this section, we explore the impact of grape cultivation in Egypt and Mesopotamia, two ancient civilizations where the cultivation of grapes and the production of wine held significant cultural and societal importance. The cultivation of grapes had a profound impact on these civilizations, shaping various aspects of their lives. Firstly, grapes and wine became symbols of wealth and prosperity. The successful cultivation of grapes provided economic opportunities, as wine became an important commodity for trade. The surplus of wine production allowed for the establishment of a flourishing industry, bringing prosperity to those involved in grape cultivation and winemaking. Secondly, wine played a pivotal role in religious rituals and beliefs. In both Egypt and Mesopotamia, wine was considered a divine gift and was used in religious ceremonies dedicated to their gods and goddesses. Wine was believed to establish a connection between the mortal realm and the divine, and it was used as an offering to ensure favor and protection from the gods. Finally, the consumption of wine became an integral part of social and cultural customs. It was served during social gatherings, feasts, and celebrations, enhancing the communal spirit and fostering relationships. The impact of grape cultivation in Egypt and Mesopotamia extended beyond mere agricultural practices and permeated various aspects of their civilizations. In this section, we delve into the development of wine as a religious and social symbol in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. The cultivation of grapes and the production of wine held deep-rooted religious significance in both civilizations. Wine was believed to possess divine qualities and was associated with various gods and goddesses. In ancient Egypt, the god Osiris, associated with fertility and the afterlife, was closely linked to wine. Wine was seen as the blood of Osiris, and its consumption during religious ceremonies was believed to bring blessings and spiritual connection with the deity. Similarly, in Mesopotamia, 
Wine was intertwined with their pantheon of gods, with many deities associated with its production, consumption, and even drunkenness. Wine was considered a divine gift, and its offerings were made to appease and honor the gods. Apart from its religious symbolism, wine also played a vital role in social customs. It became a beverage of choice during social gatherings, where its consumption contributed to bonding, celebration, and the expression of hospitality. Wine symbolized abundance, joy, and conviviality, fostering a sense of community and shared experiences. The development of wine as a religious and social symbol in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia demonstrates the profound impact of grapes and winemaking on the cultural and social fabric of these civilizations. In this section, we explore the role of wine in ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian rituals, shedding light on its significance beyond everyday consumption. Wine held a central position in religious rituals and ceremonies, serving as a conduit for spiritual connection and divine communication. In ancient Egypt, wine played a vital role in the ceremonies dedicated to the gods. It was used in offerings and libations, where it was poured as a sacred gesture to invoke the deity's presence and favor. Wine was also utilized in funerary rituals, where it was believed to aid the deceased in their journey to the afterlife. Similarly, in Mesopotamia, wine had a profound presence in religious practices. It was offered to the gods as a sign of reverence and was consumed by priests and devotees to establish a connection with the divine realm. Wine was also utilized in divination ceremonies, where the intoxicating effects were seen as a means to enter a state of spiritual ecstasy and receive prophetic visions. The role of wine in ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian rituals showcases its significance as a bridge between the human and divine realms, solidifying its stature as a sacred beverage. In this section, we explore the evolution of winemaking techniques and the cultural significance of wine in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Over time, both civilizations refined their winemaking processes, experimenting with various techniques to enhance the quality and flavor of their wines. In ancient Egypt, winemakers introduced improved fermentation methods, such as using specialized yeast strains and managing fermentation temperatures. This allowed for better control over the fermentation process, resulting in wines with more consistent flavors. Mesopotamian winemakers, on the other hand, focused on vineyard management and grape cultivation techniques. They developed innovative methods for pruning vines, trellising, and vine training, which improved grape yields and quality. Additionally, both civilizations explored aging wines, recognizing that certain wines improved in flavor and complexity with time. Wine also continued to hold immense cultural significance. It was associated with celebrations, feasts, and religious festivals, becoming an essential part of social and communal gatherings. The act of sharing wine symbolized hospitality, friendship, and harmony. Its consumption was often accompanied by music, dance, and poetry, further enriching the cultural significance of wine. The evolution of winemaking techniques and the enduring cultural importance of wine demonstrate the profound impact of grapes and winemaking on the civilizations of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. In this section, we explore the significance of wine in ancient Greek civilization. Wine played a central role in the lives of the ancient Greeks, permeating their mythology, religious rituals, and daily customs. At the heart of the Greek wine culture was Dionysus, the god of wine, celebration, and ecstasy. Dionysus embodied the spirit of wine, representing its transformative and liberating qualities. Wine was considered a gift from the gods, and its consumption was believed to bring joy, inspiration, and a sense of divine connection. Greek mythology is replete with tales of wine, with Dionysus often depicted as a central figure. In religious ceremonies, wine was poured as an offering to the gods, symbolizing communion with the divine. Wine was also an integral part of Greek social gatherings, where it brought people together, fostering camaraderie and conviviality. The Greeks developed sophisticated techniques for winemaking, including vine cultivation, grape pressing, and aging wines in amphorae. The influence of wine extended beyond the realm of personal enjoyment, shaping Greek art, literature, and philosophy. Wine was celebrated in poetry and plays, illustrating its cultural significance. 
The deep-rooted tradition of wine in ancient Greek civilization continues to resonate in the modern world. In this section, we introduce Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and a central figure in ancient Greek mythology. Dionysus was revered as the patron deity of wine, viticulture, and the rituals associated with its consumption. He was often depicted as a youthful and joyful god, representing the transformative nature of wine. According to Greek mythology, Dionysus was the son of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Semele, a mortal woman. His birth was extraordinary, as Zeus rescued him from his mother's womb and sewed him into his thigh until he was ready to be born. This unusual birth story reflects the divine and mysterious nature of Dionysus. Dionysus was known for his wild nature and for spreading the joy and revelry that wine brought. He is often associated with hedonism, ecstasy, and liberation from societal norms. Dionysian festivals, called Bacchanalia, were celebrated in his honor, characterized by music, dancing, and heavy wine consumption. These festivals served as a way for the Greeks to express their connection to the divine and to embrace the transformative power of wine. Dionysus played a fundamental role in Greek culture, influencing art, music, theater, and literature. His representation in ancient Greek society showcases the profound impact of wine and its associations on the spiritual and cultural fabric of the civilization. In this section, we explore the significant role of wine in Greek mythology and its connection to religious rituals. Wine held a sacred status in ancient Greek culture, and its presence in the stories and legends of Greek mythology is abundant. Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, was celebrated as a central figure in many mythological tales. One of the most well-known myths is the story of Dionysus and the Titans. According to the myth, Dionysus, disguised as a young boy, was captured by the Titans who intended to harm him. However, Dionysus used his powers as the god of wine to turn them into a state of frenzy. This myth represents the transformative and intoxicating power of wine, capable of both joy and chaos. Wine also played a prominent role in Greek religious rituals. It was believed to be a bridge between the mortal and divine realms, enabling communication with the gods. Wine was poured as a libation during prayers and offerings to honor the gods and seek their favor. Festivals dedicated to Dionysus, such as the Dionysia and the Linnea, were celebrated with great fervor, featuring theatrical performances, music, dancing, and extensive wine consumption. Wine was considered a medium through which participants could connect with the divine and experience a sense of unity. The influence of wine in Greek mythology and religious rituals reflects its deep spiritual and cultural significance within the ancient Greek civilization. In this section, we delve into the role of wine in Greek society and culture, going beyond its religious significance. Wine was deeply intertwined with the social fabric of ancient Greek civilization and influenced various aspects of daily life. Firstly, wine was a symbol of social status and wealth. The ability to produce and enjoy fine wine was considered a mark of sophistication and prosperity. The quality and age of wines were highly valued, and individuals who possessed exceptional collections of wines were admired in Greek society. Secondly, wine played a crucial role in social gatherings and communal feasts. It was a common practice to share and enjoy wine during symposiums, which were intellectual and social gatherings where men would discuss various topics, engage in games, and listen to performances. The consumption of wine during the symposiums encouraged camaraderie and facilitated the exchange of ideas. Thirdly, wine had an impact on Greek art and literature. Many ancient Greek vase paintings depict scenes of wine consumption, reflecting its significance in everyday life. Greek poets and playwrights often included references to wine, recognizing its ability to evoke emotions, inspire creativity, and release inhibitions. Wine even found its way into Greek medical practices, with Hippocrates, the famous Greek physician, advocating for the moderate consumption of wine for its perceived health benefits. The role of wine in Greek society and culture went beyond mere indulgence. It influenced social dynamics, artistic expression, and even medical beliefs, shaping the cultural landscape of ancient Greece. In this section, we explore the significance of wine in ancient Roman civilization. 
Wine played a central role in the lives of the ancient Romans, with Bacchus as the Roman god of wine. Roman society embraced wine and its consumption was deeply rooted in their culture and traditions. Wine was seen as a symbol of luxury, refinement, and abundance. The Romans placed great importance on vine cultivation and winemaking, recognizing the economic value and cultural significance of wine production. Roman viticulture expanded rapidly, with vineyards spreading across the Italian peninsula and eventually into other parts of the Roman Empire. The Romans developed advanced winemaking techniques, including the use of wooden barrels for aging and storing wine, which allowed for greater control and improvement of wine quality. In Roman mythology, Bacchus represented the spirit of wine and celebration. Festivals called Bacchanalia were held in his honor, involving feasting, music, and revelry. Wine was an essential component of these festivals, believed to bring participants closer to the divine realm and induce a state of euphoria. Wine also played a significant role in Roman social customs. Banquets and dinner parties, known as convivia, were integral to Roman social life. Wine was served generously during these gatherings, symbolizing hospitality and fostering a convivial atmosphere. The Romans saw wine as a means to enhance social interactions and promote a sense of unity. The influence of wine in ancient Roman civilization extended beyond festivities and permeated various aspects of Roman culture, including art, literature, and even religious practices. In this section, we introduce Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, and explore his significance in ancient Roman mythology. Bacchus, also known as Dionysus in Greek mythology, was the deity associated with wine, fertility, and the joyous celebrations that accompanied its consumption. Bacchus was portrayed as a youthful and effeminate god, who embodied the exuberant and uninhibited aspects of wine. In Roman mythology, Bacchus was believed to be the son of Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Semele, a mortal princess. His birth was extraordinary, as his mother was consumed by fire due to her inability to withstand the radiant glory of Jupiter. However, Jupiter saved the unborn Bacchus by stitching him into his thigh until he was ready to be born. This myth emphasized the divine nature of Bacchus and his close connection to his father, Jupiter. Bacchus was associated with various Roman festivals and ceremonies dedicated to wine and revelry. The Bacchanalia, an important festival held in honor of Bacchus, involved ecstatic celebrations, music, dance, and excessive wine consumption. Participants would wear masks and engage in wild and uninhibited behavior, temporarily freeing themselves from social norms and experiencing the liberation offered by wine. Bacchus was not only a god but also a cultural icon in ancient Roman society, representing the transformative and liberating power of wine. In this section, we explore the role of wine in Roman mythology and its association with religious festivals. Wine held a significant place in Roman mythology, and its connection to the gods was deeply embedded in Roman religious traditions. Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, played a central role in Roman mythological tales. He was often depicted as a youthful and charismatic deity, representing the joy, fertility, and abundance associated with wine. The Romans believed that wine was a divine gift bestowed upon them by Bacchus. In Roman religious ceremonies, wine was offered as a libation to honor the gods and seek their favor. Wine was seen as a sacred drink that facilitated the communication between mortals and deities. It was believed to have the ability to bridge the gap between the earthly realm and the divine realm. The Romans celebrated numerous religious festivals dedicated to Bacchus, where wine played a prominent role. The Saturnalia, a festival held in December each year, was characterized by feasting, drinking, and merriment. Participants would exchange gifts, engage in theatrical performances, and indulge in large quantities of wine. During the Bacchanalia, devotees of Bacchus would partake in ecstatic rituals, involving wild dancing, music, and excessive wine consumption. These festivals emphasized the transformative and liberating qualities of wine allowing participants to temporarily escape the constraints of everyday life and experience a state of euphoria and unity. The role of wine in Roman mythology and religious festivals exemplifies its deep cultural and spiritual significance within the Roman civilization. In this section, 
we explore the consumption of wine and its social significance in ancient Rome. Wine was not only a beverage in ancient Roman society but also a symbol of status, culture, and conviviality. Wine consumption was widespread across different social classes, from the wealthy aristocracy to the common citizens. Wine was considered a staple part of the Roman diet and was consumed on a daily basis. The Romans believed that wine had various health benefits and considered it an essential element for a balanced and healthy lifestyle. In this section, we explore the profound impact of wine in both Greek and Roman civilizations. Wine played a central role in shaping the cultural, religious, social, and economic aspects of these ancient societies. Firstly, wine had a significant impact on the religions and mythologies of both civilizations. In Greek mythology, Dionysus was revered as the god of wine, while Bacchus held a similar role in Roman mythology. The stories, rituals, and festivals associated with these deities centered around wine and its transformative qualities. Wine was viewed as a divine gift, capable of bridging the gap between mortals and gods, evoking euphoria, and inducing spiritual experiences. The importance of wine in religious ceremonies and celebrations influenced the religious practices and beliefs of the Greeks and Romans. Secondly, wine had a profound influence on the social dynamics and customs of these civilizations. Wine consumption was seen as a symbol of sophistication, wealth, and hospitality. In both Greece and Rome, sharing wine during social gatherings, symposiums, and banquets created opportunities for bonding, exchanging ideas, and establishing social connections. Wine was considered a catalyst for intellectual discussions, artistic inspiration, and the expression of emotions. The convivial atmosphere created by the consumption of wine fostered a sense of unity and community among participants. Thirdly, Wine played a significant economic role in both societies. Viticulture and winemaking were highly developed industries, generating substantial revenues and contributing to trade and commerce. The cultivation of vines, production of wine, and distribution of wine throughout the Mediterranean region formed an essential part of the economy. Wine trade networks were established, and the export of wine played a crucial role in the economic prosperity of ancient Greece and Rome. The impact of wine extended beyond its immediate cultural and economic effects. It influenced art, literature, philosophy, and even medical practices. The cultural significance and widespread consumption of wine in these ancient civilizations highlight its pervasive influence and enduring legacy. In this section, we examine the economic and trade importance of wine in ancient Greek and Roman civilizations. Wine production, cultivation, and trade played a crucial role in the economies of these ancient societies. Firstly, the cultivation of grapes and the production of wine created numerous employment opportunities, from vineyard workers to winemakers. Vines were cultivated on a large scale, and the vineyards required constant care and maintenance, providing steady work for agricultural laborers. The production of wine involved a range of specialized skills, from harvesting grapes to fermenting and aging the wine. These activities created a demand for skilled workers in various stages of the winemaking process. Secondly, the wine industry had a significant economic impact as a trade commodity. The production of wine was not limited to local consumption but also involved extensive trading networks. Wine was transported by land and sea, both within the Greek and Roman territories and beyond. The export of wine contributed to the growth of international trade, facilitating economic connections with other regions and civilizations. In ancient Greece, wine produced in regions such as Athens, Thassos, and Lesbos was highly sought after and exported to other Greek city-states and beyond. Similarly, in ancient Rome, wines from regions such as Campania, Sicily, and Gaul were highly prized and traded throughout the Roman Empire. The trade of wine created commercial opportunities and contributed to the overall economic prosperity and growth of these civilizations. Wine was valued as a luxury product, and the demand for fine wines resulted in economic transactions, taxation, and the development of marketplaces dedicated to the sale and distribution of wine. The economic importance of wine extended beyond its immediate production and trade, influencing allied industries such as pottery for wine storage, transportation infrastructure, and the emergence of wine merchants and traders. 
The cultivation, production, and trade of wine formed a vital part of the ancient Greek and Roman economies, contributing to their richness, prosperity, and cultural legacy. In this section, we explore the profound influence of wine on art, literature, and philosophy in ancient Greek and Roman civilizations. Wine served as a muse and a source of inspiration for artists, writers, and thinkers, leaving an indelible mark on their creative expression. Firstly, wine played a significant role in art. Ancient Greek and Roman pottery often featured scenes depicting wine consumption, symposiums, and the god of wine himself, Dionysus or Bacchus. These artistic representations showcase the cultural importance of wine, reflecting its role in social gatherings, celebrations, and religious ceremonies. Wine was also a common theme in sculptures and frescoes, symbolizing fertility, abundance, and the joy of life. Secondly, wine influenced literature in both ancient Greece and Rome. Greek poets such as Homer, Euripides, and Sappho made numerous references to wine in their works, underscoring its ability to evoke emotions, inspire creativity, and intoxicate the senses. Wine was associated with love, celebration, and the pursuit of pleasure. In ancient Rome, famous authors like Ovid, Horace, and Catullus also celebrated wine in their poems and writings. Wine became a symbol of Roman identity and a recurring motif in Roman literature, reflecting its integral role in social and cultural life. Lastly, wine had a profound impact on philosophy and philosophical thought. The ancient Greeks, including philosophers like Plato and Aristotle, explored the moral and ethical implications of wine consumption. Plato, for instance. In this section, we explore the lasting legacy of wine in modern culture, influenced by its significant role in ancient Greek and Roman civilizations. Wine continues to hold a special place in our society, shaping various aspects of our lives and leaving a lasting impact. Firstly, wine remains an integral part of culinary traditions and social gatherings. It is enjoyed during celebrations, romantic dinners, and casual get-togethers, symbolizing conviviality and shared experiences. Wine appreciation has become a refined art, with sommeliers and wine connoisseurs exploring different varietals, regions, and tasting notes. Wine has also become a booming industry, supporting vineyards, wineries, and wine tourism around the world. Secondly, the cultural influence of wine extends to the arts and entertainment. Wine is a frequent subject in literature, films, and music. It continues to inspire poets, storytellers, and filmmakers, capturing its essence in words, visuals, and melodies. The allure and mystique of wine are often portrayed, reflecting its sensual, seductive, and transformative qualities. Additionally, wine has become a source of inspiration for visual artists, with paintings, sculptures, and photographs dedicated to its beauty and cultural significance. Wine-themed festivals and events showcase its impact on modern culture, attracting wine enthusiasts from all walks of life. Lastly, the influence of wine can be seen in our language and everyday expressions. Common phrases such as, raising a toast, wine and dine, and, aged like fine wine, have become part of our lexicon, highlighting the lasting impact of wine on our communication and social interactions. Thus, the legacy of wine from ancient Greek and Roman civilizations continues to thrive and evolve enriching our modern world with its historical, cultural, and social significance. In the Middle Ages, winemaking techniques and grape cultivation witnessed significant advancements and spread throughout Europe. This expansion was largely influenced by the Catholic Church, which played a crucial role in the development and proliferation of wine production. During this time, wine became an integral part of Christian religious practices and rituals, leading to an increased demand for wine. Grape cultivation expanded, and new winemaking techniques were developed to meet the growing needs of the church. Monastic orders, such as the Benedictines and Cistercians, played a pivotal role in the promotion of viticulture and the refinement of winemaking processes. They established vineyards and monastic wineries, where monks dedicated themselves to the cultivation of grapes and the production of wine. These religious communities studied and experimented with various grape varieties, grafting techniques, and fermentation methods to improve the quality and consistency of their wines. Furthermore, 
The church actively engaged in sharing knowledge and expertise in viticulture and winemaking with the wider community. Monks disseminated their techniques and teachings to local farmers and peasants, contributing to the spread of wine production throughout Europe. The church's involvement in winemaking not only ensured a continuous supply of wine for religious ceremonies, but also stimulated economic growth and cultural exchange. Wine production became a vital part of local and regional economies, with vineyards and wineries becoming centers of commerce and trade. The Middle Ages witnessed a transformation in winemaking techniques, with the introduction of innovations such as improved cultivation practices, the use of wooden barrels for aging, and the understanding of fermentation processes. These advancements laid the foundation for the thriving wine industry that would continue to flourish in Europe for centuries to come. The influence of the Catholic Church on wine in Europe during the Middle Ages was profound and far-reaching. The Church not only played a vital role in the spread of winemaking techniques but also held significant control over the production, distribution, and consumption of wine. Wine held a sacred place in Christian religious ceremonies, most notably in the celebration of the Eucharist, where wine symbolizes the blood of Christ. As a result, the Church had a vested interest in ensuring a steady supply of wine for these religious rites. To meet this demand, the Church actively encouraged and supported viticulture and wine production. Monastic orders, which played a crucial role in the medieval Church, became centers of winemaking expertise and innovation. Monasteries and abbeys not only cultivated their own vineyards but also shared their knowledge and techniques with the surrounding communities. They dedicated themselves to the study and improvement of grape cultivation, the art of fermentation, and the production of high-quality wines. Monks became skilled vintners, preserving and developing the technical expertise of winemaking. Additionally, the church exerted control over wine production through its ownership of vast amounts of land. Ecclesiastical estates, such as bishoprics and monastic properties, possessed extensive vineyards and wineries, ensuring a consistent supply of wine. These ecclesiastical holdings became powerful economic and political forces, as wine production became an essential source of revenue for the church. The Catholic Church's influence extended beyond the production stage, as it controlled the distribution and regulation of wine. Church authorities had the power to grant licenses and regulate the sale and transport of wine. The Church's involvement in the wine trade helped establish standards of quality and reliability, ensuring that wine remained a reliable and safe product for consumption. Overall, the influence of the Catholic Church on wine in medieval Europe was immeasurable, shaping the culture, economy, and spiritual practices of the time. The Middle Ages witnessed the remarkable spread of winemaking and grape cultivation throughout Europe, largely thanks to the influence of the Catholic Church. The Church's involvement in wine production not only led to advancements in techniques but also facilitated the distribution of vineyard knowledge across different regions. Firstly, the Church played a crucial role in the dissemination of grape varieties. Monastic orders meticulously preserved and propagated various grape varieties, carefully selecting those that were best suited to specific climates and soil conditions. Through their extensive networks, these religious communities freely exchanged cuttings and shared their knowledge with other vineyards and winemakers. This facilitated the spread of diverse grape cultivars, allowing the cultivation of grapes in previously untapped regions. The Church's influence on grape cultivation helped establish new vineyards and expand wine production far beyond its original areas. Secondly, the Church's role in wine production contributed to the diffusion of advanced winemaking techniques. Monasteries and abbeys served as centers of innovation, experimenting with different methods of fermentation, aging, and blending. Monks diligently recorded their discoveries and shared them with other wine producers. As a result, the knowledge and expertise of winemaking began to spread throughout Europe, leading to the refinement of production processes and the improvement of wine quality. Additionally, the Church's control over trade routes and its widespread influence allowed for the establishment of commercial connections. This facilitated not only the transportation of wines but also the exchange of ideas and techniques between different regions. As the popularity and demand for wine grew, so did the dissemination of winemaking practices. Ultimately, the Catholic Church's influence on winemaking and grape cultivation during the Middle Ages can be credited with the widespread adoption of viticulture techniques, 
leading to Europe's rich wine culture that continues to flourish today. In the 17th century, European settlers embarked on voyages to the New World, bringing with them the art and science of winemaking. This marked the introduction of winemaking to regions such as California, South America, and Australia, which would eventually become major wine producers. The motivation behind this expansion was driven by both economic and cultural factors. Firstly, European settlers sought to establish new colonies and expand trade in these frontier territories. They recognized the potential for cultivating vines in these regions, thanks to their favorable climates and fertile soils. These settlers brought grapevine cuttings, winemaking knowledge, and the necessary equipment to begin the journey of winemaking in the New World. Secondly, the settlers sought to maintain a connection to their homeland and their cultural traditions. Wine held deep cultural significance in European societies, and they wanted to recreate the familiar tastes and rituals associated with wine in their new environments. As a result, the European settlers planted vineyards and established wineries, employing the winemaking techniques they were familiar with. These early pioneers faced numerous challenges, including adapting to new climates, selecting suitable grape varieties, and mastering the unique terroirs of their new surroundings. However, through perseverance and innovation, they successfully laid the foundation for winemaking in the New World. The introduction of winemaking to the New World in the 17th century marked a significant moment in the history of wine, forever altering the global wine landscape. The introduction of winemaking to the New World in the 17th century paved the way for the emergence of major wine-producing regions that are renowned worldwide for their exceptional wines. Three prominent regions that have become synonymous with New World wine production are California, South America, and Australia. The impact and influence of New World wine production have been profound, shaping the global wine industry in multiple ways. Firstly, the introduction of winemaking to the New World expanded the available variety of wines on the market. Prior to this, Europe held a monopoly on wine production, with limited access and availability of Old World wines. The emergence of major wine-producing regions in the New World offered consumers a broader range of choices, showcasing different grape varieties, styles, and flavor profiles. This created a more diverse and dynamic wine market, allowing wine enthusiasts to explore and appreciate a wider selection of wines. Secondly, New World wine production brought a fresh perspective to winemaking traditions. The settlers in regions such as California, South America, and Australia were not bound by the strict regulations and conventions of the Old World. They had the freedom to experiment with winemaking techniques, vineyard management practices, and wine styles. This led to innovation and the development of unique approaches to wine production. For example, in California, the concept of single varietal wines gained popularity, allowing the expression of specific grape varieties and terroirs. In South America, the use of modern irrigation techniques and technology contributed to the production of high-quality wines. Thirdly, New World wine producers fostered a spirit of competitiveness and continuous improvement. The emergence of these regions as major wine producers led to a healthy competition with the Old World, driving the quality of their wines ever higher. As a result, New World wines gained recognition and acclaim at international wine competitions, challenging the long-established dominance of European wines. Furthermore, the success of New World wine production has also had a significant economic impact. These regions have developed thriving wine industries, attracting tourism, creating job opportunities, and boosting local economies. Overall, the introduction of winemaking to the New World has revolutionized the global wine landscape, offering a vibrant array of wines, inspiring innovation, and challenging the traditional hierarchy of the wine industry. And that brings us to the conclusion of our journey through the origins of wine. From its humble beginnings in ancient Iran to becoming a global phenomenon, wine has evolved and shaped entire civilizations. It has been celebrated, revered, and enjoyed by people from all walks of life, transcending borders and cultures. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration into the fascinating history of wine and have gained a newfound appreciation for the complexities and stories behind every bottle. So, the next time you savor a glass of wine, remember the ancient vineyards, the hands that cultivated the grapes, 
and the millennia of human history that led to that very moment. Cheers!